Hey there, it's Mark. Isn't it an amazing thing when you have clear skies and the weather's decent and you can observe some deep sky objects or planets with your telescope? I'm fairly new to this hobby. I'm learning that it takes a lot of different skills and techniques, but I know this community is uh, one that shares information and often gives feedback. So as I share photos or different experiences, and you watch my video, if you have something you've learned that you think would help me improve, I'd love to hear your comments. So I'm wishing you clear skies. Hey there, so I'm out here by the telescope and I'm gonna um, show a few things about the setup of the eye polar and then the guiding. So, kind of hard to capture the video out here in the dark uh, using a phone light because I don't have any other lights out here to try to keep down on light pollution. So um, let's take a look. <clears throat> so with this eye polar we have to remove this cover and this is going to expose the polar alignment camera. We also need to plug in the cable for our iPolar and then we'll connect that also to our laptop. Also uh, before starting the polar alignment I usually take my phone and the compass and make sure that the um, telescope is somewhat pointed towards the north. Lately it seems like um, if I have it set at about 350 it's like just a just a couple degrees off of north um, it seems to do the best so around 357 degrees or 358 seems to be what usually is close enough that I still have room to do my adjustment back and forth and these two screws have some room to pivot right the mount also of course you'd check your just to make sure you're pretty level and this has a bubble on the top so you can check the level so usually what I do when at the laptop to get everything connected to the computer the first thing I do is um, I've been opening sharp cap because sharp cap in my laptop it's an older laptop seems to crash if I try to open it after I open the other applications so open that first and once I get that started opening, then I go down and I open the ASCOM device hub. And this will connect to our telescope. We're not gonna worry about sharp cap right now. So um, connect the telescope. I've already got it configured, you know, with the profile that's set up and everything. I'm not gonna go into in depth like how to do that. I'm just showing you like what I do before I try to do the polar alignment so I'll connect to that and once it connects you'll see it shows connected on the mount panel and also it'll show uh, that says now disconnect telescope indicating it's connected and it's also parked so the next thing we're going to do is we want to do the polar alignment one of the things before doing polar alignment that I like to do it's kind of it seems odd because the telescope is at zero position but I usually go to uh, the zero position option in the menu and um, choose set zero position just to make sure that for starting off this session it recognizes what the true zero position is so after that um, I have this iPolar software and it's this iOptron iPolar is the application I run and the first thing we have to do when this comes up is connect the equipment we're connecting to the iPolar um, camera or scope and so um, the other thing we need to do first off is go to settings if you haven't already created a dark frame um, you'd have to do that, but I already, I've already done that, so I load the last dark frame. And I'm not having to set, like, the settings, um, you know, because all of those settings, normally about the input center of camera, that's all retained. 
However, you can do a read latitude and longitude from the mount, which is a good idea. <clears throat> And it comes back and tells me that that succeeded. So that's all updated. And then there's one more thing um, about the mount. I have the GPS attached. So another thing in the menu I usually do is I usually go into the menu. And there's an option in this menu to check the status of the GPS. And you go to settings. And that's down towards the bottom. And you click on GPS status. If this come back, comes back as OK, According to the manual, that indicates that it's able to connect the GPS satellite and get the um, longitude and latitude settings properly and update your mount with those. So that's just one more thing to check before you go through polar alignment with this, you know, with this mount, probably with others, to make sure that um, those basic things are in place before you try attempt, you know, to do the the uh, polar alignment. So we can see here that the red circle is fairly close to the crosshairs in the center. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the mount on the tripod slightly to try to bring it in alignment. And once it gets this close, these are like very minute movements. It's very easy to go way too far. And then next thing you know, you're beyond the other direction. And again, like I said, these are like barely, if you're turning the knob to just the elevation, it's like a very minute amount. And then once it gets this close, if you can use the two screws on the side that go against the post of this mount, instead of trying to pivot the mount yourself, it's uh, a little better. It gets to this very, it gets to this very close thing where it's just a minor amount. You're going back and forth trying to get it there. It's like, So now, even when it gets to where it's lined up properly, then when you tighten the two set screws on each side of the mount down to lock the mount in, it's going to change the elevation a little bit, and it may shift sideways just a little. It just seems to be the nature of it.
with the last few little tweaks, everything's lining up and tightened down, good to go. Now the next thing I found helpful is once I got the polar laminate done, the manual in this mount says you can do a two star, three star laminate and that's the best way to get everything fine tuned. Lately what I found is if I just um, go to something like Vega, Arcturus, a star like that, and then sync to target afterwards, I seem to get the fastest and easiest results. So what I'm going to do is connect the camera. I have the camera already on the scope. And so what I'm going to do is um, remove the cover off the telescope. I'm going to slew to Vega and then position to try to line up on the star, sync to target, and then do some focusing. You can scroll down through this list, but once you figure out the number of a star, it's faster to just choose it that way. And since this will be off initially some, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the finder scope to line up the telescope and then I'll center it over here using the reticle or the crosshairs after I get it in view. So I slewed to Vega, and now I was going to do the focusing, so I can get everything in focus before I do any tracking. So I'm just going to put the batten off mask on and try to get focus. So this is my EQ-127 Celestron reflector telescope and it's it just has a single focuser. It's one of the reasons I don't really like it too much. So it's very sensitive. This trying to adjust this is like hypersensitive. It's like a a minor nudge. You know, it's like it's like barely nudge the knob. It's not even turn anything. It's like you're basically just barely putting any pressure in the direction it needs to go. So it's difficult to adjust. Unlike, unlike my other telescope, which, you know, it, it, uh, it has a dual focuser and it's much easier to do this focusing. So looking straight on at the computer, the three bars are centered, I know from the angle I have the GoPro camera on the computer screen. It may look slightly off, but looking at it straight on, it looks pretty centered. In the next video, I'm going to show how I um, use the iOptron iGuider scope. It's a mini guiding scope with the PhD2 software to do guiding. And so I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to the next video on that topic.
clear skies.